Okay, let's animate this toast jumping up. This is going to be a fairly easy animation tutorial. You're not even going to use an armature, just a bunch of keyframes for the location and rotation. And then we're going to do some polishing, make it look nice and interesting. And of course, synchronize the lights and the handle. So yeah, let's get started. I'm going to select one of the toasts here and I'm going to Alt R to clear the rotation. And here I'm going to go shift and then the arrow to go to the first frame. And now I want to find a position to start. So GZ, kind of where you would place the toes before pushing down the handle. Something like this. And since this is stylized, I think we can put this out a bit more. So this will be our like uh, starting position. And here I have recording turned on, but I need to do one time at the keyframe. I'm going to go I, Inset, and here Location and Rotation. And then we can delete unused channels uh, later on. But for now, I think that's the easiest. And to make a bounce when it comes back down, I think it would be quite helpful if we have some kind of reference floor. Um, yeah, I know right now inside the toaster, there isn't really a mechanic <laughs> that pushes it down. So it's, uh, yeah, just floating. But you know, the camera is going to be like this. So no need to do all those things. But for the animation reference, I think this could be useful. So I'm going to go Shift A, M for Mesh and C for Cube. I have this cube here. Uh, three on the numpad to go into side view. Alt Z to go into X-ray mode. And then I scale this on Z, S, Z and G, C. And just place it somewhere here below the toes. It, it doesn't have to be like uh, super, super clean, but you know. And let's scale this out a bit. S, Shift, Z, like this. So we have this floor and Alt Z back into normal mode. And just so we don't accidentally render this thing out, I'm going to hide the render icon here. So later on, sometimes I might hide it and then go into render and I have this turn on and you know, then you have this in your render, which you obviously don't want, but I can bring this back. I don't need to hide it. Okay, so we have the starting position. Recording is turned on. So whenever we move this thing, it's going to record the keyframe. And I don't care too much about the timing yet. So just go like 10 frame increments and go G, Z, move it down. And yeah, I think this looks like a good down position. Now I want it to jump up and I'm gonna go freaking high. This is stylized and you know, I think it's just more interesting. Maybe even push it further. So 20 frames going up. Let's see, we should go down the same time. And this is where the floor comes in handy. We can also hide the toaster here. Select this one, H, hide the toaster. Good thing we still have that frame. So select the toast, three side view, G, Z, go all the way down. And then I wanted to bounce. So G, Z, uh, select this frame. And oh, we can just duplicate this one. So shift D, shift D and move it here. And we're back down. And I think one bounce might be enough and then we can rotate this. So we have this for now, why right? we go down. And of course we're gonna stay here for a while, but I'm going to render this out as individual frames. So I'm only going to render one frame for the staying down time and then I can just in DaVinci Resolve uh, extend that frame. Saves me a lot of render time. Uh, for now we can maybe just go like here. Uh, Shift D. Let's make 10 frames but then we have to move all the other ones by 10 frames. So it's a bit easier for our animation to get a feeling for it. Jumps up, goes down, bounces. Uh, okay. Now, of course, right now, this is uh, the interpolation is set to smooth, uh, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But we're going to clean this out in the graph editor afterwards. OK, let's do the rotation. And this is going to be fairly simple as well. So 
here obviously no rotation and here we want to start rotating so here i'm gonna go i say all channels on a side note took me ages to find this one into animation auto keyframing and here this is uh, turned on by default the keyframes only insert needed and that means when you want to like insert a frame where the value is what blender already determined to be between two keyframes and hit i it's not gonna let you do that it says like no you don't need that keyframe which sometimes you do because you want to say no no i want to hold it here and then from starting from this frame now i want to start changing it so uncheck that uh, checkbox makes things a lot easier because now we can go rx and let's see let's try 180 toast spin so it goes from here and yeah for some reason it did that here so let's go in here summary toast object transforms and what we want is the x euler rotation which for some reason did here so let's just move that back so now in frame 20 it's already starting to move and it rotates and it does the spin and here of course we're going to change the interpolation i think for rotation linear might work quite nicely or maybe even rotate slower well, let's see so let's play this out <laughs> Yeah, we, we might want to keep the rotation here. So, X rotation. Um, I'm going to select this frame. I'm going to select the frame. This uh, Delete this and then select this. Shift D. Move it all the way. So, we are holding the rotation right. Okay, so. Go up, rotate, down. And I think I want to rotate a bit more so let's see if it hits the ground like this it would kind of start rotate a bit in this direction i think let's see hits the ground goes up again and the rotation wouldn't really be slowing down so let's see we can increase that So it hits the ground, gets rotated a bit again. Let's even remove this frame. So it just rotates smoothly, hits the ground, rotates, hits the ground again. And here we can adjust that a bit. So GZ. And then we just rotate this uh, X, whoops, uh, X, back down. For some reason it's rotated on the Y. Okay, now let's do the rotation and that should be pretty straightforward. So here in the uh, timeline editor, I first delete all the location keyframes. I only care about the X rotation for now. But just make sure to have them all selected and I'm gonna keep the one until frame 20 because obviously we don't want to rotate before we jump but then 40 60 70 and just hit uh, delete to get rid of those because now we can override those and I think I want to go for 180 so by the time we come down I have rotated this toast by 180 something like this so let's see yep all right so here 20 we go up rotate rotate come down and we could make it more interesting by maybe not hitting this when we're perfectly down but instead let's see maybe it's rotated even a bit more that means we're gonna hit it like this and then cheesy move it up and instead of going up here let's 
say frame 62, I'm going to go into side view. So GZ, go down to overwrite this one, and then RX like this, and GZ, go down even more. So we hit the ground, and then we kind of rotate in the other direction. I think that's how the, the force would work, right? If we come down here, it hits like this. Yeah, yeah, it should be. And it's going to be rotating for the entire time it's flying up. So I'm just going to go to the last frame of this flying and say Rx and rotate in the other direction. So it comes down, smacks the ground, goes up again. And of course here the same thing, but here we can actually start to rotate. So let's keep this frame and then let's uh, insert the keyframe here. So I rotation. And if this doesn't work, it's because in the preference, if you go into preferences animation, by default, this only insert needed is turned on, which I find to be incredibly annoying. Because for this case exactly, it works so nice, like... Which, okay, so I should explain. What it means is that Blender is not going to insert a keyframe between two keyframes if the position of this thing is where it should be based on those two keyframes. But for this case and for many, many other cases, I want that because what I just did, right, I insert the keyframe, so we save that location. But now I go ahead and change the other keyframe, so the end of this animation, like this. And so we have that. It comes down and might even move this frame here. Whoops, let's see. It comes down. Ah, that looked bad. <laughs> let's not do that. So down. And of course, we don't have to be that exact here. This is all happening really fast. So I think I'm just going to leave it at that. And maybe rotate like three frames, Rx, just a tiny bit up. And so 83. Let's see, we have two frames. One. Two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, 86, and then Rx, rotate back. Okay, let's see what that gives us. Going down. Uh, it looks a bit choppy. Let's see, I think the end looked a bit weird. And of course, don't worry about the timing of the flying up. Can change that later. It seems to slow down too much. So bounces, bounces. And I think this looks a bit strange that it isn't rotating anymore. So let's go in here and see why that is happening. Okay, here's the bounce and here we start rotating. And there shouldn't really be a reason for the rotation to, to slow down, right? We don't have a keyframe here. Oh, I guess it's the, the graph editor. Uh, you know what? Let's take that as a good opportunity to switch to the graph editor and work on the timing and the interpolation. So if I go in here and control tab, I switch to the graph editor. And since I'm dealing with um, height, in like meters and rotation in Euler, uh, it's very useful to click normalize here. So that means now everything is between zero and one, right? Otherwise I have to go all the way down here for the uh, rotation, then I have to zoom in for the height, but I click normalize, it's between zero and one. So I can just zoom in here and I can also delete all the channels that I didn't really use. So let's see, Y location, C location, kind of control, no, it doesn't do that. So just delete it. Whoa, Z location, <laughs> don't delete that. That's the important one. 
x location and y and z come on doesn't matter okay so now only have those two the z location and the x rotation and let's take a look at the location first i'm gonna select this oops gonna hide the x rotation gonna zoom in a bit more holding down control and moving up and down zooms like this and going left and right super intuitive okay so here we are and this should be linear um actually it doesn't matter we can keep it at that so this and here we don't really want this kind of graph right we don't want to like slowly ease in and then like the slowing out is good uh what we can do here is select this handle hit v and then choose vector so now it's just going to point towards the next point here and here the same um we actually want to go faster right when something is falling down it's not falling down slower and slower unless there's air resistance but uh, not happening <laughs> at those speeds so it's like this one then this handle and you can also change it to free so now this handle is going to stay there and then let's go for this and let's do something like that you might we could actually do that here so i'm going to select this handle v change it to free and now with g i can move that around and for a stylized jump i think it's good if these if it hangs in the air a bit so i could even select this one and like s just scale this it might be almost floating now let's take a look okay that is <laughs> yeah that's a bit too extreme let's scale this down and if i hit p i can select the preview range right and i can just drag this here and then i hit play let's see that is very slow okay and i think we're gonna make the tire jump go a bit faster anyway but let's let's focus on the uh, graph here because now we have to do the same here on the bounce it's not going to slowly go up and then go up faster and faster but let's go v free also change this something like this and here select this one v whoops v to a free and move it around like that and this might be a bit too extreme cg maybe like that okay that is our bounce and the rotation should be pretty linear to be honest um, so we could just select both frames and then hit t for interpolation and go for a linear the downside is now you don't have these uh, nice handles anymore but let's see just a linear rotation there aren't really any forces that's going to make it spin less and then here between those two we can also go for linear so whoops I, let's hide this one uh, select those two t linear okay and now let's work on the timing a bit so i'm gonna select both and alt p to clear these preview range and this should probably be happening a lot faster so let's select this one and then g x move it to frame 30 try a really fast one and of course it shouldn't fall down uh, three times as long so g x oops uh, let's see from 60 to 30 okay and preview now we only need this range so let's see oh that is really fast Okay, let's make this all happening a bit faster and so with control tab i can switch to the timeline 
Uh, it's a bit easier to move frames around here. So GX, move this here, and GX, move this to frame 40. And let's try this one out. Okay, that looks faster. Uh, I think that's good. Maybe even let's have less preview here. Up. And of course, let's fix the end here because something seems to be wrong. Don't want to end on zero rotation. So R, X, like this. Okay, so down. Okay, let's see. Go up, and we jump. Up, bounce. And I could even make it go a little bit like till one more time to the other side, but I think that's uh, good enough for now. And on a side note, I'm I'm aiming for this uh, torso robot anyway, so there won't be a landing animation. It's just gonna go up and rotate, and the the robot is gonna look a lot more awesome if it rotates because the robot arm is going to synchronize to the rotation of the toes. So this is why I think having a lot of rotation is good. And of course, it's just more, more interesting anyway. Of course, but we're wondering why does it even rotate? Um, if it's just getting pushed up vertically. I don't know, I think it happens. It can happen. Yeah, it doesn't flip, I know. It doesn't flip this much. Okay, now I want to duplicate this animation onto the other toes and then offset and, you know, modify it a bit. So let's go in here and choose the dope sheet where we have the action editor. If you don't see it by default, usually it's on dope sheet, then you click here and choose action editor. And so there's always this animation data, right? And by default, it just created a new one and called it toast01 action. So we can rename it to toast1. Good. not jump up, but jump. And let's choose the other toast and just click new. And here we open our toast one jump action. So now it's using the same action and you can see it's like this uh, animation action has two users, the two toast breads. So if I edit one, I'm gonna edit it for both toasts. Now obviously we don't want that. So I'm just going to duplicate this and call this Toast two jump. And here's a cool thing. Every object in Blender has this delta transform, which is like a second transform on top of the normal transform. And that is super useful for animations because now I can change the rotation and say X 90 degrees. And you see it just rotated. So now the toes aren't exactly the same but the animation still works, so it, it, it doesn't get messed up. It basically just adds a rotation of X 90 degrees onto every single frame. And that is very useful. Now let's make this one jump a bit higher because I think that toast isn't quite high enough. Yeah, let's, let's go, let's just push it. So here, um, Let's bring in the timeline. It's always a bit tricky, but yeah. So here, timeline. Okay, recording is turned on. G, Z, make it higher. And then we should also make it take a little bit longer because it's the same speed. Uh, we can actually go down. So now they are at the kind of the same position here, right? And let's see, we take 16 frames to go up. So let's go down 16 frames. That means, well, let's do some math. Oh, 52 is my estimate. Is that it? It looks correct. Okay, so go up and down. And of course it should bounce higher too. So G, Z. Let's move this out a bit. Now, of course, we can't synchronize this anymore because you know, it's uh, landing a lot later than the other one. Wait, let's see this. So it bounces up. Uh, I'm 
almost tempted to rotate it one more time, but it's already <coughs> rotating way too much, to be honest. Uh, so it's going up. Let's use our floor. Let's hide this one. Um, side view. Okay, so we're coming down. And yeah, it should rotate more. It has a lot more energy. So uh, X. And also then it doesn't look too synchronized with the other one. Whoops, wrong direction. Let's see. It hits it. Goes down, 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 down. This is where we have the X rotation keyframe. Oh, and then it's here, but of course. So first let's rotate this more. And it comes down. And let's move this one out. Now it shouldn't. Okay, we have to delay the X rotation here. So G move the rotation out. So it comes and then it lands. And then it starts rotating towards this one. And of course, to be uh, exact, this would now be the pivot. And then it would go there and bounce and you know what um i mean animation is endless you can spend like your entire lifetime making this toast bounce look good maybe not that long but you know forever as i mentioned before the bounce ultimately is not going to be part of my final robot animation so let's just keep it at that it goes down does this sliding oh, man i'm tempted i'm tempted Let's just rotate it a bit less, so then it makes more sense. And G, move this out a bit. So now, okay, goes up, smacks it, goes down, and you know what? Let's rotate a tiny bit here. G, Z, and here. Uh, X, G, Z. That's the final one. We need more frames here. Let's go 90 frames. Um, Alt H to bring in the other toast. And uh, all my lights, crap. So let's see. Play and. Okay, that looks. Holy crap, something. <laughs> Okay, so something is clearly going wrong here and I totally did that on purpose. I just don't know yet what exactly I did on purpose, but a good way to figure this out, you go Control G, Action Editor, and then you go to the Graph Editor. And then you can usually see like, yeah, that keyframe doesn't really fit into our uh, curve. So those two are the ones, so 83 and 87. So let's see, control and then, so the X rotation, and then you can see it here. So 173, it's not good. 180, yeah, it should not be 173. Okay, and here it should not be 180. Instead, we're coming down and here uh, X. Ah, this is why, because it's doing the flip. As soon as I rotate on this axis, right, it goes from minus 180 to 180. Um, but I don't really want that. Uh, one easy way around that should be, I just use the slider here instead of rotating on the X. So that's what happened, okay. See, this is what I did on purpose, I um, meant to say. So, goes down, up a bit more, and then we can go back to 180. So here it's uh, playing it safe. Okay, so. Now let's see, they jump up. Um, yeah, to be honest, now I don't like this. This one here lands very extreme. And here we do this slide. So you know what? Let's just have it land less extreme. 
and because now I'm very careful looking at this because now the fact that we are rotating around its own pivot and not really around the edge that it's standing on isn't uh, that bad anymore and it still jumps up a bit maybe a bit less now let's go in here and oops reduce that okay let's see maybe not this high so g z just a tiny bit down and here they are landed so let's play this bit down and i think you know what the down takes too long let's see um goes up 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 down uh, it just stays oh it takes way too long to go up okay so let's change that a bit let's see so we go from 54 to 60 so six frames 66 that looks better uh, still like kind of strange And now we should fix the rotation. So let me go into the graph editor. Uh, we're still on normalize, of course, makes things easier. Apparently it's still rotating. No, it's not really. It should go linear from this to this. So we can just delete this keyframe. Right, so it goes up. It smacks down. Oh, even here, this, no, no, this shouldn't be, see, this is the problem, okay. So, let's delete this keyframe as well, like, from the moment it lifts off to going down, it shouldn't really, the rotation should be quite linear, so we can move this up, G, Y. Oh, of course, here Y means going up, so we have X and then the Y axis. So, down. Smax it. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. Goes the other side. Let's see how this plays. And yeah, I still don't like this is this looking strange. So let's see what's happening here between the G and Z. Oh yes, so here we are. From here up, going down, and then we don't need that. Why is that keyframe? Oh, 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 this is happening. <laughs> yeah, we don't need any of those keyframes here. Um, delete those. And let's move those GX much closer here. Okay, so. Yeah, this is looking better. Maybe now it's even a bit too fast. Um, GX, move this out two frames, and then select this one too, and GX, this out two frames. Let's see, jumping up. Yeah, I think, you know what? We can live with that. Okay, so the next thing we need is uh, to animate this handle. This should be super straightforward. So let's go in here and we can just do that in the timeline or the action editor. So control tab and let's go I location. Not gonna rotate this and see it created this action handle action. Sounds good to me. And here we want it to go down. So G Z let's see so it looks kind of synchronized you can always claim there's some super intricate mechanic and that is why the toast and the handle are not going down at the same speed 
but it actually looks good. Maybe GZ a little bit more. So we can, you know, have the full range here. Just see this doesn't look too strange. Go down, 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 down. Okay. Stay here. Of course, this will be rendered. And I also all channels. So we keep the keyframe. And then it should jump up really fast. I mean, basically here already. So G, oh, let's, no, let's duplicate the first frame. So Shift D 24. I might even have this bounce a little bit. So let's see. Uh, Looks good to me. And let's maybe GZ. Whoops. And off the screen. Just bounce down a little bit. This goes up. That should be good enough. And let's check the interpolation. So, oops, not Control T. Uh, control Tab. Um, this too shouldn't be. I think when it went down, I kept the red going down in a smooth curve. But here. Um, at the very least, it shouldn't be slowly accelerating. Uh, of course, it's like, I don't think anyone's going to notice that, but you know, for the tutorial's sake, let's not have this graph like this, but we can just go like T linear. Yeah, I think this uh, makes the most sense for some mechanic thing. Bounces here and then, okay. Now, of course, we want to bring in the cool, what's it called? The red glow. Because that's what I showed you in the last video, how we synchronize all these lights with the glow. So now we can easily animate that. So I select the toaster where I have the custom property down here called heat. And let's go to frame zero. Um, for some reason, I still have a keyframe. Oh, I did that in the tutorial and I should save. Okay, so actually that looks pretty good. So I goes down, can maybe we start glowing here. So keep this at zero, make it zero, and then our recording is turned on. So I've already recorded that. Here, I think the smooth curve actually makes quite a lot of sense. So it starts glowing and let's go to one. Ah, crap, because of that, we actually have to render out all the frames with the toast being down because we want the glow to change. And I might even make this, um, you know, give it a few more frames. So it goes down, let's see how many frames we have. Frame 20 is where we start jumping up. So let's see GX. Now, of course, for a real toast, this would go down. Then it starts glowing. Okay, so this is the frame where we can still save render time. So, right? So we would render out how it gets stronger and stronger. And maybe even a bit slower. Let me change this to uh, free and like this. So it takes a while. Yeah, I think I want the effect to be even slower. And I can do that here. So, oops, I can just move this on the X of G, X. And maybe move this up a bit. Uh, <laughs> starting to look a bit bit weird because the handle is too fast. So it's like this one, maybe like this. I mean, you can't even see it. Maybe even delay this a bit more. So GX. So the toast isn't in the way of our beautiful start glowing animation. Maybe even a bit more GX. 
And I think I'm gonna delay this other thing because this is too blocky. I want more frames in between. Okay, so let's choose the handle. It's down and, oh, we can do that in the timeline, so control tab. So we have the handle instead of frame 20. Let's go, let's go for frame 40. I'm rendering this thing out in EV anyway. So, you know, I want to have some time. And here, select all these frames, and now jumping isn't going to happen before frame 40. So, this by two frames. Just make sure there isn't something got messed up. Yeah. Same timing. Let's go back to the toaster, and here, so now we have just more time. So, control tab, graph editor, and I can move this. G, X, somewhere here, maybe frame 39. Right, so it can go down. It is time. And then, of course, we can still choose to extend this frame. Uh, to be honest, no one wants to see an animation of a toaster just standing there. So, right, cut that short. And here we want to go down. I think getting cold is actually faster than getting hot for a lot of machines. Um, and I don't know enough about physics, to be honest, to know if, this, <laughs> if the curve should be like this, like, I don't know, that's, let me just touch the toaster real quick. I, it, it just feels like the more heat it has, the more it's losing, and then, you know, the residual heat stays low. I think that's the correct way to animate heat. So it goes jump, and here, G, X. Let's go on here. And here we don't even see it, so maybe even move this a bit. This is for the effect, so people can see and be really impressed that this toaster, while it jumps up, stops glowing. So, GX is still glowing a bit, and here we're not even gonna see it. Ah, see it a little bit. Okay, but I think, control S, this works for me. So I'm gonna render this out as an animation, and hope you learned something. I uh, hope you forgive me that I made these stupid rotation mistakes and I have to go a bit back and forth. But to be honest, that's what animation is like. There's a lot of going back and forth. And of course, you can keep polishing this on and on and make this bounce like really realistic, the correct pivots and all that. But, you know, as I mentioned in the next video, we're going to turn this into a robot. So I think the next video is already like the robot wig, like where we make this arm coming out and the arm is gonna grab the toast in midair because there's a really cool bone constraint um, that copies the rotation and then we can animate the influence. So we have this robot arm thing rotating, rotating and then it just before it catches the toast, it's going to be rotated exactly like the toast. And I think that looks pretty cool. Then it catches it and then it places it down on a plate. And then maybe the other robot arm, I'm gonna attempt, like, so there will be one robot arm catching this toast, another one catching this, but obviously there's only one plate. So the first arm catches it, puts it on the plate, and then I'll try to have the second arm throw the toast to the first arm. Uh, if that doesn't work, I don't even know what to do. But I'm gonna figure that out and then I'm going to record the tutorial and I hope you subscribe so you don't miss out on that and of course comments, feedback, criticism, you know, whatever, just drop a comment below. Subscribing helps, liking this video also helps and yeah, of course if you have an idea of what you would like me to make a tutorial on, Blender, Unity, anything goes, just let me know. Thank you for watching and goodbye.